Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between the team here of the New Art School and Design the Ducks podcast. Our guest today is John Spencer. Welcome, John. Well, thank you very much. It's, it's good great, to be here. Great to have you. So, tell us, tell us about you and your work. Right. Well, I'm a graphic designer. Um, I worked out today that I've been in the business 44 years. That's an awful long time. Right. But essentially, I, I design graphic identities, logos. Um, I create campaigns. I have done quite a lot of naming over the years, too. Um, but the thread that runs through uh, my career, I think, really is, is identity, graphic identity work. Um, I run... Um, a company called Off the Top of My Head, which I describe as a virtual agency. Um, essentially, it's a design collective. So we have no studio space. I work with uh, freelancers, specialists um, all around the country, um, which is a much more flexible way of working, and I think a better way of working than the conventional design studio, because essentially I bring together the best people for each project. Um, and actually, it's um, better value for money for clients because we don't have expensive studio space. Um, and I've been doing that for eight years. Before that, um, I have run three design companies, all of which were essentially, um, uh, the work was essentially identity design. So I've had a lot of experience in working in the conventional studio way. Um, but find this to be much better for for me, for us, and and for clients. Fantastic, fantastic! This is, this is great. So you've seen a lot of changes uh, in the in the field. Indeed, indeed. I mean, I suppose the most obvious changes are the technical changes, technology, the introduction of technology all those years ago. I mean, it's been around for a long time now. Um, I think it's an interesting business in the sense that there have been a lot of changes. The way that we work has changed dramatically over those years. But I think the fundamentals of what we do as graphic designers hasn't changed at all, actually. Um, it's not rocket science. You know, what we do is not, is not complicated. Um, but to get it right and to do it well is difficult, if yeah. that's not a contradiction. Absolutely. No, no, Paul Rand said design is simple. That is why it is so complicated. Uh, no, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and a lot of the work that I've done over the years is, has been for nonprofits, for charities, government. Um, I, probably, I think probably my first charity identity goes back to something like 30, 35 years. So I was kind of working with charities before it became popular in the business to to. to you know, work with non-profit organizations. And, and how, how has that, has that remained sort of uh, very similar? Um, yes, I think, so. I mean, I think, yeah, I think the, the fundamental principles are similar. I mean, I think, you know, the charities are having a, a much tougher time of it now. I think it's, it, you know, certainly with coronavirus, I mean, that's, that's been pretty devastating, but I think, um, the competition, there are so many charities actually, and there are so many charities doing very similar things. So I think competition in that sector is, is massive right now. And, and certainly more so now than it was when I first started working for them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you are, uh, working on a, on a book lately with your, your latest, your latest work is, uh, is, uh, is about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my latest book, well, I have published one book called Time Flies when you're having fun. Yes, the next book, here, which I hope, yeah, yeah I, I have a copy. Coincidentally, <laughs> oh, I have a copy. It's a, it's a great book. Really, really good. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, it's a fun book. I mean, I don't think you're going to learn a massive amount by reading it, but it's an entertaining book, I hope. Uh, but my next book is called There's No Bullshit Like Design Bullshit. Um, Brilliant. And it's pretty much about what the title suggests. Um, I think there is an awful lot of bullshit in the design business. And it's something that I've ranted against for a very long time. So I've decided to make a collection of things that I've written over the years and just thoughts on that subject, really. Um, I think that for me, 
the design business is essentially about communication, clear communication. I think the the the, the the essence of a of a designer's job is to is to bring clarity to things, um, and I think there is so much jargon and bullshit going on. Um, it's a kind of strange contradiction in a way that as a as a business we're actually quite bad at describing what we do, explaining what we do, um, which which is, is is odd for a, a business which is essentially about communication. I think anyway, that's what the that's what the next book is about. It's be, I'm, I'm working on it now. It, it hopefully will will uh, be published, as I say, in a few months' time. I mean, there's something there because we, because we we don't describe exactly what we do. We receive mm. a lot of bullshit, so sometimes we have to uh, give it back in a way. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I, I don't really know why this is. Um, I mean, I'm not even. I don't even know whether we're worse at it than than any other industry, to be honest. But I think the irony of it is that we are supposed to be about clarity. Of course. Um, and and I I, I kind of wonder sometimes if it's not that. If it's if it's because we're perhaps as an industry slightly embarrassed by what we do, that we 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 the simplicity, the fundamental simplicity of what we do, perhaps we struggle with a little bit. We 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 have a, a tendency to dress it up and big it up um, when actually it's just not necessary. What we do, the best the best of what we do is absolutely incredible and. Designers are producing wonderful things every day. You know, we just don't need to to talk about it in the way that we do. It's it's kind of snake oil salesmanship, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I just find it very, very irritating. Brilliant. So during your career, uh, you have also mm. trained many designers uh, in in your in your studios. Yeah. So you have. You know, absolutely, uh, absolutely, yes. In your yes. studio, so that so you you have a tremendous. Uh, experience from training physically designers, yeah. uh, but you've yeah. also uh, taught. Tell us uh, about how you you started teaching uh, both in in universities and about your teaching experiences in general. Well, my teaching experience, I, I've never been involved in coursework at university. I've I've been um, a guest lecturer, visiting lecturer. Um, I have been a um, an external examiner. Um, so that's the that's that's the total of my involvement in, in teaching um, as as such. Um, but of course, if you run a studio, then you're you're constantly teaching people. I mean, you 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 have to. It's 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 the only way to develop a team. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it's something that's just never happened. It's not something that, I, and it's something that I would be very happy to do. It's just not. It's just not really. Ha I've just not never really been involved in in coursework as such. Uh, but I think you know, it's it's in the interest of the design industry, and it's actually something that senior designers should do. Should be involved in bringing on the next generation of of, of designers. But I think that the one, the single most important thing um, is that the people who are teaching the students have real life experience in the, in the industry. Um, I think there is, my impression is that right now, um, a lot of the people who are teaching at university just simply don't have that experience. Absolutely. And it's and that's one of the things I think that you you asked about how how the industry has changed. I mean, I think it's one of the things that I remember when I was at um, art school when I was at Ravensbourne, and I just remember that even the full time tutors were practicing designers and they were tremendous, but they were they were still you know some of the guys were they were getting on a bit. You know, but they were still they were still working. They were, you know, they still had that enthusiasm uh, and, the, and the passion for what they did. And that trans that uh, that that you know, they communicate that with the students. So I think that's that's hugely important. And I think that's important now that that going back, the people that go back into universities and and teach have been out there, you know, in the in the world doing things for long enough. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Uh, I mean, when was when was the first time you 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 entered uh, as a as a as a guest lecturer? Oh, what a question! Um, I I honestly don't know. Probably ten, fifteen years ago, probably. Yeah, I mean, yeah. quite late on in my in in the career. I mean, I I'd, I'd been working a long time before I actually did that. Okay. But I love to I love to do it. You know, it's uh, it's you know, and if you can bring a little bit of entertainment and a little bit of a little bit of wisdom maybe to the students <laughs> then uh, that can't be a bad thing so uh, i think uh, you know i think in a, in a way what I, what what you do as a certainly as a as a guest lecturer is to is to give them some kind of real world context for what they're doing yes absolutely absolutely what and tell us more about about that about the methodology and the your your approach to that um, I mean, essentially, I, for me, it's been, and I don't know how other people do this, but for me, it's really been about taking, when, whenever I do it, it's, it's about taking projects that I'm currently working on or have worked on. I mean, often it'll be based around a theme, uh, and sometimes I'll be asked to talk about a particular theme. But I'm using, always using sort of real examples, you know? So it's, not, I, I'm sort of very very practical about what I talk about you know I'm, I'm I don't spend a lot of time theorizing about what I do I just tend to you know say well this is this is what I think and and, and this is this is how I've gone about it and I've gone about it for this reason everything I do is I try to keep everything I do as simple as possible um and and you know where where you know I have a a clear explanation, agree with it or not, but a clear explanation for what I've done and why I've, and why I've done it that way. And I try to bring that to, to, to any lectures that I do so that people, I mean, in a way, it's kind of anti-bullshit, you know, it's just kind of telling it as I see it. Um, so that's really the sort of underlying principle that I would apply to, to any, any lecture that I, would, that I do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What would be your 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 advice for aspiring uh, designers today? Be ready for anything. I mean, I think, frankly, it, we don't know how the design business is going to develop. You know, particularly now, mm -hmm. but I think we've we've never known that. I mean, the 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 the, the pace of change, as with everything, is 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 ever increasing. So I think that, you know, I think we can best describe the future of design as a known unknown. And I think that, um, uh, you know, if, if you're not, as a designer, if you're not ready for anything, you're not ready for any, if, you know, if you're ready, if you're not ready for anything, you're ready for nothing, really. Mm -hmm. So be open-minded, you know, grab opportunities when they come to you. And, and just, just, yeah, just have fun. Fun is so important to what we do. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it's not a laugh. It, you know, we're not having a laugh every day, but you know, underlying everything we do, we have to enjoy it. We have to, we have to have fun doing it because if we don't, it's not going to be very good. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it, it's funny how the uh, the present situation, in a way, for a designer, mm. hasn't changed that much. <laughs> It hasn't changed things that much in a way. We've always worked in the studio. We've always produced things. Uh, you know, yeah. we've, always, we've been sending stuff online for 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 a very long time. Uh, sure. So, sure. But, uh, but it hasn't changed that much. Do Do you feel that something has changed during the past two or three months? Um, well, I think a lot has changed. I think it depends where you start from. I mean, for me, I mean, I have a home studio. And I work remotely with with a lot of people. So day to day, um, I'm probably doing things online more so than than many would. I mean, it's just the nature of the way that I work. So for me, you know, lockdown has been just another day in a, in a way, <laughs> or just another working day. That 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 hasn't changed anything. And you know, and and of course, it's you know, it's not a question of always working remotely and never meeting people, um, you know, it, it's a balance of the two things. So I suppose the, the meeting up with people um, uh, about projects, as, of course, has, has stopped. 
but because of so much of what I do is online, then then it you know and and is remote anyway. It, it's a continuation of the same thing. Um, and I think you know, but frankly, so much of what we do as designers is is remote anyway. Yes. You know, I mean, if you think about working on a on a project um, in America, for example, you know, most of what you're going to be doing day to day is is remote working. You're not going to be traveling back, but you're not going to be commuting. So, you know, uh, there's a lot of remoteness to what we do, isn't there? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's one of the that's clearly one of the big changes that's happened in the business, in the industry, and in the way that we work. That we we can actually do that. Um, Imagine what this situation would have been like 30 years ago. It would have been horrific. Well, it's horrific now, but it would be doubly horrific that time ago. Absolutely. So if, if you could give some uh, advice for the uh, idealized form of education, I mean, the way, the way you've experienced education in a certain way, if there was no limitation to what, what we could do, what would you suggest that, we, that, that would improve things? Um, honestly, I don't really think that, that education in, within the current system, in other words, design schools within universities, you know, as, as university faculties is going to change much. I don't, I, you know, you can, you can talk about what the changes need to be and how they're going to do it. But I just don't see those institutions as being capable of, of doing that. I mean, I think it was a very sad day when um, when design schools became parts of universities. They, I, for me, they just don't belong there. You know, um, design isn't an academic pursuit. You know, there is, of course, re, there's, there's a very valuable research element to it, but that's, um, I think that essentially, uh, design is a vocational activity. It's a trade, it's a craft. Um, so I don't really think it belongs. It belongs in that environment. So I would like to see specialist, um, specialist art schools that are, you know, perhaps run as social enterprises that are run by the industry. I mean, you know, when you get when you get a few designers together over drinks, the conversation almost inevitably turns to quality of design education, and um, and um, the conclusion to that discussion is. Never positive. Absolutely. So I think that you know my, my my view is that if the design industry feels so is is so disillusioned by by what's happening in at uni, in uni, at university education at the moment, then it should do something about it. And I think that you know perhaps we could you know perhaps we think of a, the model of the uh, communication arts, for example. Um, the advertising school school that, that's been, that's run by the industry um, it's a good example you know where essentially you kind of students are on a sandwich course and I think that's the in a way the ideal model is that you that, that you know you you have you know as much experience working in studios um, as you do you know actually in the classroom if you like absolutely so I, so for me, I mean, I, you know, I, you know, I think you can talk about, you know, what changes need to be made in universities. I just don't see it really getting there. They're kind of enormous, unwieldy institutions that are, and I know this is a generalization, but you know, unwieldy and slow to change, and and frankly, I think pretty much out of touch with what's going on. Our industry is like any industry is very fast moving. It's changing rapidly. And I just don't think these institutions are able to keep up with it, really. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we... so I think small, smaller specialist, you know, small, smaller um, design schools that are run by the industry, smaller in the sense that they they train and they teach the very best students that they can get, um, rather than try to fill. Uh, you know, as, get as many bums on seats as possible, I think is, is a good place to, to go because most of the students coming out of design schools now can't get jobs. I mean, they just aren't the jobs. Um, but of course, universities are big business and they have to get the numbers through. So, so I think, uh, you know, a very different way of looking at it. And I, truthfully, I don't know whether it'll happen. 
Um, I would love it to. That's brilliant. Well, we know we 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 are working on it. So <laughs> it's yeah. something that we're working on. So good luck. Yes, good luck. Of course, of course. <laughs> brilliant. So, uh, how can our viewers find you and listeners? Oh, well, they can find me on my my website, um, which is um, off the top of my head. Co. Uk. Um, I'm actually working on a new website now, so you've you've caught me about two weeks too soon. So they will go and see a website that is rather out of date and a little bit clunky, but the new one will be unbelievably brilliant. Well, we are going to be releasing this later, so it's, it'll be it'll be fine. It'll be perfect. Good, perfect. excellent, excellent. So that, yes, that's the that's the best place, and that's a you know it's um it's it's a, it's going to be a very concise website there's going to be you know a relative, I'm, not, I'm not going for you know 50 projects on it it's going to be a small number of projects that really encapsulate the work that that we do as an organization that I do personally um again it's the sort of telling it as i see it really um simple to the point bullshit free brilliant brilliant any any last piece of advice that you'd like to to close with um, what, to, to students, to, to anyone? To students, to teachers, to, to the industry, to, to whoever. This is, is your, this is your space. Um, I just think that, oh, there's so much advice, I suppose, if I, gave it, if I gave it a lot of thought. I mean, I just think we work in a... I've loved my career. I still love my career. Um, I... I think what what designers contribute to business and 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 to the world is is tremendous, um, and I just think that um, let's let's be let's be proud of that. I suppose um, let's just let's just be straight about what what it is we do. Let's stop pretending that it's anything other than what we do. Let's stop pretending that it is anything other than actually fundamentally quite simple. But as I said earlier. You know, to do it right is difficult. So it's simple and it's difficult. But then, you know, as you said earlier too, you know, that's it's the nature of the beast, isn't it? Really, everything that's that's good is probably simple. Ultimately, um, I just think embrace, you know, embrace the future, whatever that is, because you know we have absolutely no idea. Be ready for anything, um, and uh, yeah, just have fun. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, thank you, thank you so much uh, for your time, and uh, My pleasure. We'll be seeing you at uh, Valencia Design Education Forum this uh, November. Oh, so, well, that, that would be uh, wonderful. Preparing for that. Uh, no, I very much look forward to that. It'll be fantastic. Great. Have a fantastic day. Thanks very much. Take Thanks. care. All the best. Bye bye. Bye.